Hey there, cool kids. Welcome back to another fun build here on Make and Believe. I'm Nathan, and today we are tackling another fun challenge here in the shop. We are electrifying the Copper Chopper. Um, this is going to be a super fun build, something I've been looking forward to for quite some time, so let's get right into it. The Copper Chopper electrification, this time on Make and Believe. Right, so here she is, the Copper Chopper. <laughs> As you may recall from part one of this build process, we restored this bike from a $10 garage sale special that was fully spray painted black with a rusted out chain and a off index front wheel, uh, just really, really in poor condition. Um, back to this bicycle that, that now has brakes, that now has right here, rear rear view mirrors and a front headlight. Uh, we've we've worked much of the metal down to chrome or to bare metal for you know additional chroming where, where we want it to be silver. And I have um, painted the, uh, the frame itself, copper, reassembled the bike, Give it a nice tune with a brand new chain, and it is a fully functional single speed bicycle now, uh, which I'm very, very happy with. Uh, a couple of things I have done since that last video uh, that were just tiny, minor things, uh, so I did not film them. Uh, one, I relocated this headlight. I originally had it up here, uh, which looked pretty neat. But what I realized is eventually I'm going to need a dashboard mounted system, which I've started to work on here at the handlebars. And that system, I wanted it to be big and really, you know, hefty. And um, it actually was so hefty <laughs> that the knob here conflicted and just hit that headlight. So I've moved that down. I'm still very happy with how it looks. Um, and we still have plenty of clearance for the wheel work that we're going to do in part two here to electrify this baby. Um, so that's what's happened. This clamp here you can see actually let me grab uh, the smaller version of this so normally I will use one of these um, as a it's a universal phone holder uh, it comes in three pieces that, I, that you can 3d print I try to do this in hundred percent infill so that it's nice and solid there's the back uh, the base piece there is a knob to turn it back and forth and then there's a slider which it, uh, holds the phone on one end um, and kind of sticks through the knob there. So when you turn the knob, the slider moves back and forth. This is really secure. It really, I've used this particular model of universal phone holder on all of my bicycles so far. I love it. I've got it. Um, I've got it on all of them <laughs> in some form or another. Uh, it just straps on with zip ties. So it's very versatile. You can see the four slots there too on either side of the base. So you can mount it um, horizontal or vertical, depending on how you want to put it onto your bike. I printed this at 3.5 times the size that I do normally for a phone in order to get it big enough to hold my Samsung Galaxy Tab Active 3, which I'm actually filming this on right now. But later in the video, I will switch cameras so that you can see the tablet mounted here. Um, it fits really well. It locks really solidly. Um, I printed this out of a wood PLA in the middle. And then the glow-in-the-dark green on the top and the bottom uh, to kind of give it this nice Neapolitan <laughs> sort of look. Um, I had a lot of glow-in-the-dark PLA left over, and, you know, when I'm riding this thing at nighttime, any light is, is better than no light. Uh, so that headlight is pretty awesome for seeing and being seen, but, you know, just in case the battery dies or emergencies, I'm going to add little touches of glow-in-the-dark PLA across this bike, just really subtly, so that you can't even tell it's there in the daytime. Uh, but then at night, it'll have some nice color to it. All right, so let's move on to electrification. Right, so when electrifying a bicycle <laughs> from scratch here, the best way to do it is to buy a kit, and there are a lot of components that come in most of these kits. Um, the best one that I've seen online, if you're going to buy all of the components and assemble them how you like, is probably the Bafang kit. Um, you know what, I'm not even going to link it, because you can. it's easily Googled. You can pick your own, um, your own voltage, your own... Uh, amp hour total in your battery your uh, you know it, it's all pretty customizable to what you'd like you can even choose whether you want a mid motor uh, or hub motor on either the front or back wheel 
I've gone a little bit of a different route here, and I'll tell you why. When you get those kits, there's just a lot to install, a lot to maintain, and a lot to get right. Um, this bike was really challenging to get through the restoration phase, and I'd like for the electrification phase to be a little simpler than that. Uh, additionally, my plan for this bike has always been to keep the electrical drive systems and the manual drive systems separate. Um, so pedal assist is okay if I, if I end up wanting that, that's fine. Um, but it's not my desired number one like goal for this particular bike build. I've got another e-bike, the Swagtron, um, that you that you probably could see in another video. Uh, it is is the seven model and it's really sweet and I love it. It's got good pedal assist. It's got options for throttle or for just pedaling without any power and different levels of settings. It's awesome. I love that bike, but that's a different bike for meant for a different kind of ride. This is a cruiser, and I want to take this on long distances. Uh, I want to really be able to relax back into the chopper style seat and my ape, ape hanger bars and, you know, just kind of roll with it and take my time and go a little slower with this bike. This is more for speed. This is more for comfort and cruising. To that end, um, I want it to be A, as simple as possible, and B, I don't really want to deal with a lot of wires on this bike. I want to keep it as clean as I possibly can. So instead of going with a traditional um, electric bike conversion kit, which contains the hub motor, uh, an inverter, a battery system, um, controls, you've got your throttle that's all wired up, usually brakes, disc brake cutouts, um, which this bike is, is so old, we're not even looking at disc brakes. I've got a single brake on the back end, <laughs> no brakes on the front, and that back end brake is a V-brake. It's a, it's a rim grab brake. It's not even a disc brake system. I wouldn't even know how to go about putting it. I don't know if they make disc brakes for 20 inch by four and a quarter inch wide tires that would fit this bike. I had hard enough time finding calipers that would get the brake line to run out around this big fat wheel. I'm not even trying to put a disc brake system on the back of it. So I want to keep the back intact. Single speed, nice and slow, nice and easy cruiser bicycle, just bicycle, manual drive. I'm going to move all of the electrics to the front end. Um, and there are a lot of options for that. You could get a front hub uh, motor kit that still has an, an inverter and a battery system and all of the different parts that come along with, you know, an e-bike conversion kit traditionally. With those come a lot of wires. Um, and that really was the first thing I was trying to avoid. So I kind of found a, a different product that I'd never really heard of before. Um, it's, it's very, I found it in three places. <laughs> and what it, what I, what I've learned after doing a bit of research is this appears to be a model that is uh, designed in, and produced in China or it may have been designed in France and is produced in China, but is distributed through a couple of different distributors in the States. Now I say may have been designed in France, it's really hard to pin down. The French company called T-Bike claims to have designed and invented this, but their claims, honestly, as an inventor and an engineer myself, their claims seem a little shaky. It may be the case, I really don't know, but they, they also might just be the French distributor that is repping that, um, that this particular model in their country. That's fine too. You know what? I, I No harm, no foul. I'm not really trying to like call anybody out here. All I'm saying is that I've noticed that this same wheel motor, the same hub motor for the front wheel system that I'm going to install on this bike seems to appear from three different distributors. Two of them are here stateside. In fact, they're both in California. One of them is in Los Angeles and one is in San Francisco. I... For the most part, this product sounded too good to be true. And usually when that 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 is, you know, what's coming out of my research, I'm really hesitant. It's a red flag in and of itself. Secondly, the Los Angeles distributor, I looked up their address online and it is a house. It is someone's residence. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that this is a bad product, but what it means is I can't go there physically and talk to a person and see the product before I buy it. And one of the one of the things that got me excited about finding a Los Angeles distributor was that. Look, buying things online are great, but when you buy something really expensive that you want to make sure works and you don't want to ship it back and forth, especially something heavy and pay all these shipping costs and wait a bunch of time and, you know, delivery, you really want to get it right the first time. And I like, especially when working with bicycles, to get local vendors where I can go talk to them. I can make sure that I'm buying the right product, that everything's going to fit properly. And that just wasn't possible with the LA vendor. Fortunately, I'm up in San Francisco a lot. 
it was a similar situation with the San Francisco vendor in that they did not have um, a listed address. Uh, I did get an address on <laughs> on the box when it shipped to me. I haven't Googled it yet, but I rather imagine it's the same deal where this is somebody's house or it's somebody's warehouse location that's not open in a retail sense for customers to come in. However, the difference was when I called the LA office and I called maybe four times within a week, I got no response. No one even called me back. Um, and I, it, there was not even like a human voice on the answering machine. That was red flag number two for me. It's like, you know what? I just can't bring myself to purchase something this expensive <clears throat> without getting in touch with someone and at least asking a few questions first. When I called the San Francisco distributor, which was, I mean, they have different brand names on these wheels, even though it seems to be the same actual part. Um, I got a much different result. Guy was really friendly. He answered my questions. He was he was willing to actually deliver the wheel to me and meet me at a certain location at a certain time, um, which I thought was awesome. That didn't end up happening because shipping costs were just so negligible. And I was like, you know what? I want it to be there when I get there. So I arranged for shipping um, because I felt confident after talking to the guy that this was real and he wasn't just trying to scam me, um, which happens. You know, you got to protect yourself. Long story short, I did get the bike wheel in. I'm now back in LA. I've got it behind me. We're going to do a little bit of, I, I unboxed it just to get it to fit better in my fully packed car for that trip. Um, but it is in its bag. So we will unveil it uh, and we'll take a look at what else came in the package. It's not a lot. It's pretty surprisingly simplistic. Uh, and then we'll try to get an install happening. Then I'll take it on a bit of a test drive uh, after it's fully charged and I'll give you guys a full report. Because to be honest, that was another thing. I, in my research, I really didn't see a lot of, uh, of reviews about this particular product online. There was only the manufacturer, or the distributor, I should say, uh, their website, both in LA and in San Francisco. And I looked at the one in, um, in France, too. And it was a very similar product, although different peripherals were sold along with the product uh, and a bit of different branding. The only thing I found outside of the distributors, which usually is a red flag for me, was a single review, but that single review came from the Electric Bike Report, and and I really I've been watching that channel for years, and I trust them. I watch them do an install, I watch them do a road test, I watch them put this thing through its paces against other uh, like you know rated against other electric bicycle uh, conversion kits, and it seems to be legit. So I am excited to see what it really does on the real world, and to put that information out there so that if one of you are looking for this product, you can find a little bit more information than I did when I went in kind of blind. With that being said, let's get to unboxing and let's get this thing charged up. I'm excited to turn this bike electric. Okay, let's get right to the main event. Inside the box with some padding, we had this wheel in a case. Oh, you hear that little beep? I'm not sure what that means yet. It's done this to me a couple of times on my trip. I think it's probably a low battery warning um, because you know you ship with a nominal amount of electricity in the battery but it does seem to beep on occasion when it feels like I'm like handling it. Uh, the, the unit has a gyroscope sensor in it, so it can tell when it's being moved. All right, just open up this bag here. I have already taken the liberty of taking a look at this when I was up in San Francisco, because I was really excited, but I bagged it up again for the trip. And right when I got it, I did put some initial pressure in the tire. I do not believe it is up to uh, max PSI, but it was something. Something's better than nothing. I didn't want the tube and tire slip sliding on me during my journey. Um, so this is what it looks like. You notice this pedal pattern in one side of the wheel. That was my first indication that um, these three similar products are probably the same product um, being distributed in different regions of the world. That being said, uh, let's roll this around so you can get a good look at it. I did buy the Smart Bike Wheel uh, from the San Francisco distributor. I've honestly, at this point, forgotten the name of the distributor in Los Angeles, but it's something very similar to this, um, just marginally different. Uh, and then the French distributor and or inventor of the product is called T-Bike. That's T-E-E -E Bike. Um, I will drop links to all three of those different um, distributors in the description for this video so that you can kind of pop onto their websites and see what they offer that's different. One of the things I liked about the Smart Bike Wheel, in addition to um, there being two generational options, this is the Gen 1. They have a Gen 2 as well, and the Gen 2 is a little more expensive, but I thought, hey, if they've still got a few of these Gen 1s in stock, let's take a look and see what the product is like before I dive in with you know more cash to upgrade in the future. 
Another thing I really like about this is that everything is built into the hub motor. It's not just a motor here that then attaches with wires to your inverter and your battery system. You've got your batteries built in here. You've got your hub motor built in here. You've got your gyroscope built in here. You've got um, essentially Bluetooth connectivity built into the hub. There are no wires whatsoever for this device, which means you can essentially install this on one bike, use it for a while, decide you don't like that bike anymore, or you just want to swap the wheel out to make another bike electric, literally unscrew the wheel, put it onto another bike, recalibrate the gyroscope or through the app. There's an app that, that connects to this via Bluetooth and you can use it for Android or for or, or iOS. Um, and just use it for another bike. So if I do decide to upgrade this bike in the future to a Gen 2 or to another product, it's that easy to just pop this off and then this doesn't go to waste. This Gen 1 um, hub motor wheel can go onto another bike and live a whole its whole best life. So that's what we're looking at. We've got a nice Kenda tire in here. I bought the 26 inch option. Um, as you may recall from the first video, the front wheel of the chopper bike is 24 inches. But if you see on that fork, we've got quite a bit of distance here. So I thought I could get away with a bit of a bigger wheel. What I'm not sure about is the width. So on the website for these, the picture is like this. And it looks, even in real life, um, head on shot like this, like the hub motor fits within the diameter of the wheel. That is not actually true. The hub motor itself from edge to edge is about two and a half inches, whereas this is a 1.95 width tire, so almost two, just five millimeters short of two inches. Um, it's not that big of a difference, but I realize it may prevent a problem mounting into my forks. I don't think that it will. Um, I've done some, I did my measurements pretty thoroughly and I think that I'm within um, width distance. But if there's a problem there, uh, I do plan to manu manually modify my forks as needed in order to get this hub motor to fit in the system to at least give this a test drive. Um, so that's the plan. That's, I think everything covered about, oh, let's pop this open. So one thing I also found interesting is the charging port appears to be in the center of the hub, of the, of the like rail, the mounting bracket that goes onto the forks. I didn't expect that. I kind of expected it to be like out here somewhere with a little charge port because you're not gonna be charging while you're riding. But you know what, man, in the future, if we get like really awesomely efficient solar panels and I want to hook one up to the bike, I guess I could just plug it in and have this be charging full time even while it's riding on the wheel. And that's it's kind of forward looking and, and cool, I guess. So um, interesting stuff. They do give you a bunch of washers and there are instructions as to how to mount this. So I'm, of course, going to follow uh, the factory instructions when we get to that point. But for now, that is the reveal of what came with the motor, and now I'm gonna show you the peripherals that came in the box. Okay, so as far as peripherals go, this is it. This tiny little box <laughs> is all that came with this bike. Again, there's no inverter, there's no uh, long cables, there's no uh, like hand levers for brakes. There's no, none of that stuff is necessary for this, this hub motor. Um, what we did get is a toolkit with an installation manual. I took a look at this. This is not an instruction manual. This is not for operating the machine, <laughs> which would have been nice to have. But that being said, it is a fairly comprehensive installation manual, and they do give you all the tools that you need to install the wheel. Um, I'm going to try to use these. You, you know, you guys all know I've got a shop full of tools, but if I can, I'm going to try to use what they sent me in order to make this happen, and I'll let you know if that's really possible or not. Additionally, there is a rubber uh, universal phone mount, which again, as you know, I'm going to be using a tablet for the dashboard for this, uh, particularly because I want to do like split screen options and have different apps in addition to the bike app running at the same time so that I get a little bit more of my, uh, you know, connectivity in play. Um, but this is neat. So nice that that comes as, as a part of the package. I'm not going to use it, but that's fine. Uh, I've got my charger in the box. We'll look at that here in a minute. A little bit of promotional materials, a couple of stickers, a really nice note from Pat, the guy that I spoke with on uh, the phone, who seems to be the primary distributor here in the, well, in the San Francisco location for this particular product. And then they also do give you a disc brake that, you know, lines up for, to mount on this hub wheel motor, uh, motor wheel. 
And that's cool. I'm not going to be using this, to be honest. Or at least I don't think I am. If I get the product on there and I feel like I really need a front brake in play, I, I might decide to add a disc brake lever and, and the whole accoutrements that go along with this in the future. Uh, but I don't, at this point, I'm going to just rely on my rear V disc brake. The wheel does, um, it is supposed to cut out when, when it's not needed. The gyroscope, when you set that up, uh, when you calibrate it, once it's installed on the bike, it's supposed to be able to determine whether you're going uphill or downhill or whether you're in motion. Um, if you're going uphill, obviously it will add a bit of, of assist, even without the cadence sensor. Um, so that's another thing. They do sell various add-on options in addition to the wheel. I'm going to start this build with just the wheel and see where that takes me. They offer a cadence sensor, uh, which essentially tells the wheel via Bluetooth connection, it's another peripheral that you can add on to your uh, to your pedals, how fast you're pedaling. Uh, and that's pretty neat. They also have a throttle, uh, a manual thumb throttle, and that's another Bluetooth connection that it's the, the thing mounts onto your handlebars. That I think I will purchase at a certain point. However, the Gen 1 version of this that works with the Gen 1 wheel is out of stock and it takes six to eight weeks, Pat has told me, for it to come in. Totally fine, understandable stock issues. Um, but I would like to purchase that product when it comes in so that in addition to having the traditional uh, assist that this wheel is going to provide going up hills and stuff, I can decide manually I want to ride electric for a while. I can thumb throttle it. I can stop pedaling. I've got a free wheel spin system in that back on the single speed drive for the manual part of the bicycle. Um, so I can, you know, ride electric motorcycle style when I want to, pedal when I want to, and then use brake, or uh, pardon me, pedal assist if, if and when I want, I can add on that option as well. They do have a Gen 2 version of the throttle that is in stock. So if you were looking at the Gen 2 and you want to get that next generation goodness, that's available to purchase straight away. So let's get the wheel uh, installed, then we'll get it charging, and then we'll see what this bike can really do. Okay, so again... There is a really short, like just five minute installation video done by Electric Bike Report. That is the, the reporting service. They have a YouTube channel. They talk about all kinds of electric bike conversion kits. I highly recommend taking a look at that installation video if you just want the nuts and bolts as to how to put this thing together quickly without all of my babbling. But I'm following a similar procedure here. Um, I will drop a link in the description below to the Electric Bike Report installation video if you just want to cut to that, get your installation done, and then come back to check out how mine has rolled. Um, I'm already going to break my own rule <laughs> about using the tools that came with the bike for installation because the Copper Chopper here is a bit of a custom piece, and I've got these retro-style uh, rear-view mirrors that I've been using just for riding. Um, I've got a 7mm uh, ratchet on a driver um, just to loosen those up, flip them over, uh, and tighten them back down again so that they're facing essentially right now down towards the ground because the first step for me is going to be to flip this bike over and I don't want to damage those when I do it. I am also going to extend my seat up a little bit further, probably to about the edge of how far it wants to go so that I get um, a, a better balance with the handlebars so that when I flip the bike over, the handlebars and the seat are as level as possible when we're working with them. Um, the bike in the most stable fashion I can have it in. Once I've done that, I'm gonna pop the front uh, wheel off and we'll, we'll start to install from there. All right, upside down and nice and safe. I, I did whip out the first of the tools that came with the hub motor kit and the smaller size um, wrench head here will fit uh, what's on my existing tire. So I'm gonna go ahead and use their tool to remove the wheel. Well, I tried anyway, <laughs> but since this is a pre-existing wheel, it's not perfect. Um, I have some rust buildup on, on the outside of the, the nut that's holding my bike tire on. So I'm gonna get my actual wrench out and go from there. So because I didn't have a front brake system installed on this bike, it was as easy as just loosening those two nuts and popping the old wheel out. I'm gonna set this aside for now. Okay, so now that the original wheel is off of the bike, the next thing we want to do is prep the smart bike wheel. And, oh, there went that beep again. Interesting. <laughs> so the first thing you want to do is take uh, the gear, the hardware, the nuts, the washers, the lock washers, off of both sides down to a certain point. So on this side with the pattern, you want to leave that thin washer on. And, of course, you can leave the um, cap for the charging port on as well. 
And on this side, you want to leave the thick washer and the lock washer on. Um, and what I would do, if I were you, is when taking these off, set them in the order they came off in on you know a piece of paper or on the instruction guide uh, so that you don't mix them up, putting them back on, and you know which side is which. But uh, that's pretty much it. Take them off, and we're going to put this puppy right onto the fork. All right, I've got the wheel prepped. The next thing to note before we pop it on there, on the non-pattern side of the wheel, let's see if I can get this on camera here, you can see there is a silver mark. Most of this is black, this, this central ho uh, rotor. There's a, a, a silver mark here, and there's flat sides on either side of the central mark. Where that? I hope that's coming out on out on camera. There we go. So what you want, uh, since the bike is upside down, is for that s silver mark to be pointed down. Uh, if you were somehow installing this without flipping the bike over, you'd want it to be pointed up, but um, pointed down in this case. The other thing to note when you're putting the wheel in is that the pattern side should be on the same side as your chain, as your drive side. So let's do it. Right, so I was able to wiggle it in. As you can tell, it took some doing. My forks are really tight, and um, let's pop you out of the holder here. You can see there is a little bit of a, an issue, as I suspected there might be, where the drive side is actually just barely rubbing against the fork. Now, before I start going in and modifying the forks in any capacity, um, what I think I'm going to do is use some of these extra washers that came along in the package, specifically for this purpose, to see if I can slip another one in there. It shouldn't take much more than one um, to pop out my forks to a bit of a wider width in order to get that clearance on the drive side. Honestly, my forks are really tight, and you saw it was a bit of a struggle to get it in before I added a spacer washer, so we shall see. All right, it actually took two additional spacer, spacer washers in addition to the one that um, came on the wheel, but I am now spinning free and clear. It is very tight on that drive side, but it's spinning nicely, um, so I'm pretty happy with that. And honestly, I don't know if the forks would have been forced out any farther than that. <laughs> so this is like a really, really tight fit for this particular bike for this particular product. But thanks to what they provided with these extra spacer washers, I did not have to dive into my nuts and bolts set to make this work. So let's continue on with the install. Okay, so the lock washer on the non-drive side, the non-pattern side, goes on the inside of the fork. On the other side, it goes on the outside of the fork. So the next thing we're gonna do is slip this onto the axle with this notch going into the gap of the fork. After that, on both sides of the bike, we're gonna add a lock washer, and then we're gonna add a nut to clamp it all down and hold it all in place. And I should be able to use this provided a little wrench to grab onto the outside of the nut to tighten everything down nicely. So that's next. I can report this wrench worked actually pretty well. I'm feeling that the tire is in there really securely. If you want to use your own wrench to really tighten it down, I would recommend it if you feel that's necessary because the only thing holding <laughs> this hub motor onto your bicycle are those two nuts on the outside. So make sure you are comfortable before you start riding this thing that everything is nice and secure. I actually think this tool did the job. So at this point in the game, if you have a front brake, now is the time to install it. Be it disc, be it a V-brake that's a rim grab, now's the time to re-engage it before you flip your bike back over. Of course, I don't have a front brake on this bicycle, so I'm going to skip straight to flipping it over, getting it back up on its kickstand, and realigning my mirrors. And at that point, we'll move to the next step of installing the app and doing the calibration phase. Okay, 
all fixed up and ready for a manual test drive. Now, before I actually use my app um, that I've downloaded, and I will link a in the description um, to iOS and Android. I'm going to use the Android version of this app. I've already installed it on my device. It was super simple, just like any other app in the world, so no need to put that here in the video. Um, but before I try to uh, connect the app via Bluetooth to the wheel, I'm going to go ahead and charge the wheel up because, like I said, I have no idea what the charge state of this device is. Um, what they say in the instructions is that there is an LED light on this somewhere, which, oh, here it is, right here on the top. Um, and it will be red, of course, when it's charging and green when it's good to go. So I'm going to plug this in next, let it charge up. I'll let you know how long that takes, and then we'll move forward with the app installation. While we're charging, which seems to be working just fine so far, uh, what I can do is pump up the tire. Um, it did not say in the instructions, but it does say on the Kenda tire itself that the PSI range is between 40 and 65. When I get that range on my other bikes, I like to go for a, a clean 50 to 55, somewhere in the middle there, so that's what I'm going to do. Right, so while we are charging the hub motor up, quick review of the stuff that came with this. Um, this product, wrench, valid, used it, great. In this bag, we had a bunch of spacer washers. You might need more than I did. I needed three in total. One was already on the hub motor, so I used two out of this bag, and let's see, there are four left, so six extra washers. Cool, great, fantastic. Used those. Um, I took the cap off of my, um, my inflator tube because I replaced those with some shiny light spinny ones because I like to be seen at night. Um, so didn't use, <laughs> but nice to have. Uh, this Allen wrench, didn't use it. I don't even really know what it's for, and it actually has a screwdriver on one side. Neat, awesome. I didn't use this, so um, cool, but no thanks. Also, they sent me an entire um, Allen wrench set of, of hex head tools, and cool, but I don't even know what I would have used that for because there's nothing with these fittings in the package. So a lot of stuff um, came with this that I'm not going to use, including the phone holder. You may use them. You may get better life out of them. You may add them to your ongoing growing tool collection. Awesome stuff, but I didn't need them for this bike, which is surprising. Really, all I needed was a couple of spacer wa washers and this wrench, and it was that easy to get this thing set up. Um, so yeah, just waiting for it to charge, and we can move into the app stage of this build. All right, it's been about an hour and a half, and the wheel appears to be fully charged. The LED has switched from red to green, so it is time to set up our app. Um, I have already downloaded the app onto my tablet. It is the Smart Bike app right here. So I will open that up. Okay, so I had opened this app up before um, I got the wheel and just kind of did a little test drive without actually connecting it. And I have lost the initial prompt that told me to scan the USB, or pardon me, the QR code here on the wheel hub motor itself. So in order to get that back, I figured out you just hit this search button. Oh, my goodness. Is that it right there? Yeah, that's it. All right, we power. Oh, and it beeped. That's pretty cool. All right, well, it looks like I'm connected. That was actually really, really, really easy to do. I'm, I, you know what? I'm, I'm legit impressed. Uh, it is already telling me I'm at 90% battery. It's giving me a temperature. It's giving me a Bluetooth signal. Um, there's a lock option. That's pretty cool. And it lets you uh, hit boost manually or stop boost or set your, um, your pedal assist settings. So essentially how much the motor is going to help you get up to speed. 25, 50, 75, or 99 percent, one, two, three, or four options. Um, there are more settings. Let's just open up the app here real quick. You can play with this to your heart's content. I believe, yeah, there's an upper speed limit you can set, an over speed alarm. You can program in your weight and the bike weight. You can align a cadence device for the pedal assist. That's pretty cool. This is all pretty cool stuff. All right, now that I'm set up, I think, let's see if I can go sideways with this app. Well, I'm gonna play with this for a minute and get it set up in the bike and then we'll, we'll you know, I think it's time for a test drive. All right, I've switched to a screen recorder app here so that you can see my split screen. I've just got my camera so that I can talk to you at the same time as we look at 
the Wii Power app for the wheel. Um, this is pretty cool. I'm just going to hit, let's start the, uh, yeah, level one. I'll start to roll a little bit down my driveway. Looks like speedometer is working pretty well. And let's go. All right, now that I'm on flat ground, I think we are supposed to calibrate. Let's stop this. Let's go into settings. I'm not, so, oh, here we go. Gyro angle, angle calibration. Let's do that. Okay, may need to recalibrate. Bike is on level ground, check. Handlebars are pointed forward, check. The bike is in vertical and, and the bike is in a vertical and horizontal position. Okay, yeah, let's do. And tires are, are installed correctly, so let's calibrate. Gyro adjust. Oh, am I supposed to move it? Yeah. What does it say here? Bike is on level ground. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All these things are true. Honestly, not sure if I've calibrated the gyro properly or not. That being said, I'm going to go ahead and put this back into one, or mode one, and I'm just going to take it for a roll and see if I can notice any um, any increase or pull. Or then maybe I'll look at the uh, the online instructions if I can't figure it out from there. Let's start. So here is the, the uh, first person perspective that I'm seeing of that split screen monitor. Um, first of all, everything is pretty awesome here. The only thing I've noticed so far that I don't like is that uh, the app has a tendency to take over and flip into horizontal or I guess vertical mode and become the sole app. Um, that might not happen if I'm using a different app than my camera because I think my camera times out after a little while. I think that might be what's happening there. So if I try something with like my email, it might work better. Uh, another thing I noticed I can do that I haven't done yet is change the name. Right now it's defaulted to Wii Power, but I can call this the Copper Chopper or whatever it is I choose. And that's pretty neat. Um, yeah, I'm pretty stoked about this. I think I'm gonna just open her up for a minute off camera and to mode four and kind of, I'll give you some feedback here when I come back from that trip. Back from that initial ride, and that was that was really fun. I'm actually super impressed with uh, 
the get up and go that this motor has. Um, the calibration did seem to work properly, and all I really did was balance the bike, you know, vertically and horizontally, and hit gyro calibration, and then it, it was done. It didn't give me any confirmation or anything, but it seems to have worked just fine. Uh, I haven't taken it up and down a hill yet, so that'll be a future test. Um, as you can see here in the split screen view, I have actually um, managed to flip it to miles per hour and miles in distance, as opposed to kilometers, which is just easier for me to read. Um, when I switched it from metric to imperial, I also got Fahrenheit instead of Celsius as the temperature. Super cool. Didn't take that much battery to do that mile, um, even though I was up. And when I switched it up to levels three and levels four, it seemed to think I had less battery. But I'm sure it's just proportional percentages of how much charge it has left in order to st it's es estimating it's going to stay in mode three and mode four until it's totally drained. So that makes sense. Uh, and as soon as I switch back to mode one and then to stop again, um, as the vehicles come to rest, it has re-estimated uh, that battery back up to like 95%, which is much more in line than than, than I thought it was at initially. Um, this is pretty cool. I'm pretty stoked about this product so far. I'm uh, The one thing I noticed when I started to get rolling is that even though the wheel... Um, my goodness, I lost my camera. The camera just falls asleep if you're not using it. That's what's happening there. Okay, so on that note, in the split screen, I was able to, um, to use my Gmail app, which didn't fall asleep, and it stayed in split screen while I was writing. Uh, that being said, even though the wheel was free and clear... Um, when I was testing it upside down, you know, just spinning it around. Once I kicked into mode three and four, I did hear one of the screws on the hub motor dinging against the fork, uh, ding, 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 as I was riding along. So what I think I'm gonna do is actually try to get one more of those spacer washers uh, in there, but I'll do that off camera and then test the bike again to make sure that I'm free and clear in the higher gears and I have a little bit more extra space between the forks and the front hub motor. Other than that, uh, this was a super easy install, and I think we're good to go here. I'm really happy with the way that the uh, the tablet serves as a dash with dual screen. And of course, if you're familiar with the Samsung Galaxy Tab uh, Active 3 that I'm using here, you'll know that you don't have to just do split screen. You can launch pop-up windows and have like five or six apps going at once, you know, as many as you can see in that screen. So... That's pretty cool, um, and I may try that as we move forward. But I'm going to do some tweaking here now that I've got everything, you know, kind of dialed in, uh, and then I'll give my final report after I've been able to take this on a longer test drive. So it was on the distance portion of the testing that, for me, this product failed. Um, it may not fail for you, but for me, for my purposes, for my bicycle, this just wasn't the right product, and I ended up sending it back. I'm sitting here in my editing zone, putting this video together now. It's like six months later. I've lost a ton of weight. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm thinking about this. I have hours and hours of footage of me testing this product. I've looked for the good. I try to be positive. Overall, the bottom line is this just didn't work for me as claimed. I have come to the conclusion after extensive testing. First, let's start there. Pat at Smart Bike Wheel, if you happen to be watching this video, thanks for being a cool dude. Um, Pat worked with me to try to figure out what it, the issues I was having were and how to resolve them. We went through several, several different things. First, my uh, gyro wasn't calibrated properly, so the bike thought it was going uphill a little more than it was going you know, level and it was applying too much power. Even after we ironed out all of that, this particular Gen 1 Smart Bike Wheel product that I had purchased wasn't performing the way that it should. Uh, it certainly was not giving the range that I needed uh, for this product, so I had to return it and I'm going to replace it with uh, something stronger and with a longer battery life. At the beginning, at the outset of this video, I did note that the claims made did seem to be too good to be true, and in the end, even with their average mileage distance rating of 35 miles uh, before the battery died, for me, in my experience, when the app was tweaked, and to Pat's credit, he tweaked his app to try to get any more range, so awesome, but when the app was tweaked to get anywhere close to that range, the pedal assist, the power that was being provided by the wheel was so negligible that, in my personal opinion, it did not even give enough power to kind of offset the 17 pounds that the wheel weighs. Um, 
I can ride this bike on flat ground without pedal assist for forever. <laughs> There's no mileage difference. And when I really got to the point where I wasn't experiencing um, pedal any in, in assist when I was trying to, to pedal the bicycle, I at that point the product just wasn't worth it to me. I eventually did also take it on an uphill journey. And gosh, it just wouldn't do it. It just wouldn't get up a hill. And to be fair, my bike is heavier than a lot of bikes. Your bicycle may have a totally different experience. And if you want to try this product, I encourage it. Pat's uh, return policy is there if, if you have a problem. And frankly, if you're closer to the LA distributor, they did eventually get back to me and you could try them too. Or if you're in France, try the T-Bike. See how it works for you. If you're in a city environment without a lot of hills, I am in a city environment with a lot of hills. Maybe that you'll have better luck if you have a lighter bite, bike than what I'm using here, etc. onward. I also have come to the conclusion that the particular product that I purchased, the, the actual unit, may have been defective. I don't know that the battery state was proper. I was experiencing weird things with it. Now, obviously, when you put a charge drain on, on a battery, you'll see the battery level decrease. But... This decreased too much. <laughs> Even on the lower level settings, it would drop like 20%. So that was an issue. Uh, and it was an issue that I confirmed with the distributor shouldn't have been. It should have been dropping at about 10% um, to 12, not 20. And I was experiencing 20 pretty much any time I put power after the recalibration of the gyroscope, even on level ground. Um, and that just wasn't right. So I think there may have been a product pro uh, problem with the battery system in this particular unit that you may not experience if you purchase this product and get a different unit than I did. Uh, or if you buy the Gen 2, it may just perform better. So I can't say this product isn't good. In fact, I secretly in my heart of hearts want this product to be good. Even though I feel that what I got was too good to be true and maybe I had a problem with my unit, I really hope this product succeeds. It's super cool. And as we move forward into the world of e-bikes, the more things we can do via Bluetooth and the more products we can pack, you know, with, with uh, the decrease of size of things like Bluetooth um, technology parts and uh, a gyroscope parts, the size of these things, it, as they're getting smaller and we can cram all that stuff, a tachometer into a, a wheel hub motor and everything just communicates wirelessly. I think that's a brilliant concept and I really hope that in the future that this gets to the point where I could probably use it again for my purposes on a cruiser like this. Um, right now, that's not the case. No harm, no foul. I have returned the smart smart bike wheel and my hunt for the electrification of the copper chopper continues. I will find the right product for this piece and we will bring it to full electric motorcycle cruiser potential. Um, thanks for sticking with me all the way to the end of this video. I know it was really long. I've chosen to just edit out all of the testing because it's literally hours of stuff. Um, if anybody's interested in that, I'm happy to share in the comments section, uh, you know, Q&A you know, or whatever you'd like to know. Uh, I put this thing through its paces pretty significantly. In fact, I kind of feel like a beta tester at an r and I mean, I've done that work before and this is definitely what it felt like. So I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Uh, and so is Pat. Call him up, ask him yourself if you have any questions about how this may work for you. Um, and thanks for, for watching. I'll see you next time on Make and Believe.